Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna from Hasna's Not Me and I welcome all my subscribers to another video with me where we today are going to touch the topic of peritoneum so guys this topic is you can say complex in a way because people really find this topic hard today i'm going to give you a basis of the peritoneum and introduction of the peritoneum as if we get too much into the concept it might overwhelm you i'm just going to lay down the defining terms of what of what everything is and stay tuned because in this video i will also be giving you a visual representation of the peritoneum via my cling wrap right here to begin with what is the peritoneum a peritoneum by definition it is a large serous membrane lining your abdominal cavity so if this is your entire abdominal cavity suppose i'm cutting your, your abdomen and taking a sagittal section we're seeing your abdomen from side view the peritoneum will be lining this entire cavity below is the pelvic cavity whereas above is the under surface of the diaphragm the most important part about the peritoneum is its various parts the first part of a peritoneum is the parietal peritoneum and second part of the peritoneum is you guessed it right it's the visceral peritoneum another thing that is added in the peritoneum topic that unlike in the pleura of the lungs or the pericardium we in the case of peritoneum we'll have to study the peritoneal folds and this is why things usually get complicated right about over here however i am going to do my best to give you the optimal concept of these peritoneal folds that is the aim of my videos so guys keep watching what is the parietal peritoneum parietal peritoneum is the outer covering of the peritoneum we all know that there are always going to be two coverings right so the outer covering is the parietal peritoneum which is basically responsible for lining the walls and the cavities like the inner surface of the abdominal cavity pelvic cavity below and the under surface of the diaphragm above so this is the parietal peritoneum now, what is so special about it well the most special part of, about any parietal layer in your body is that it is getting somatic innervation because of this somatic innervation the parietal layers are pain sensitive and why are they so getting somatic innervation because they're derived from the somatopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm now visceral peritoneum as the name says it it is lining the organs the viscera suppose this is the liver within your uh, abdomen itself has a very firmly adherent lining which probably you won't even be able to separate from the viscera it's really just an invisible lining you can, although it looks invisible but it's there for sure so that visceral part that lines the organs is the visceral peritoneum and visceral peritoneum nerve supply is usually autonomic because it is derived from the splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm then how will you detect if there's pain in an organ that there's something going wrong with an organ that will happen when this organ comes in contact somehow with the parietal layer when this organ is distended or ischemic or it goes undergoes stretch is when you'll feel that there's something wrong with the visceral layer now let's dive into the concept of the peritoneal folds let me just enlarge this abdominal cavity right here and guys i want you to remember one thing that this is the side view so this is a human being i'm cutting the human being from the middle right in the median plane and i'm viewing him from the right or left side all right so you know that this is the parietal peritoneum covering your walls abdominal walls so what's happening here is that the peritoneum has folds all right folds meaning the organs in the peritoneum like suppose this is the stomach right the organs of the peritoneum are suspended within the abdominal cavity via folds these are the peritoneal folds so suppose the peritoneum basically takes a fold over here to suspend your stomach as you can see it is surrounding it with the peritoneum but it uh, stomach has to be suspended in within the abdominal cavity via this fold these peritoneal folds have a prefix of m e s they are usually beginning with the m e s words and the majority of the parts of the gut these are known as the mesenteries all right m e s e n t e r y the mesenteries all right however if there's any specialized organ like the appendix then you'll call them mes zo appendix so the prefix mes will always be added appendix colon will have their special names for this suspension makes sense to you now that we know what a mesentery is i just want you to know that, that not all organs have this fold of peritoneum suspending them some organs are like 
this. They are in close proximity with the posterior abdominal wall. Let's suppose this is the kidney right here. Hence, the peritoneum is only covering them from one side. You can see only a part of the kidney is covered, whereas the rest of the kidney is kept directly on the posterior abdominal wall. It does not have a mesentery. So, since it does not have a mesentery, it is fixed in place. So, there is a great role of these mesenteries to provide movement, to provide mobility. And another role of these mesentery is that they allow the passage of nerves and vessels to the organs. Right? That makes sense. And in the case where the organs that, that are not completely covered by peritoneum, these are known as the retroperitoneal organs. And why do we call them the retroperitoneal organs? Because they have only some part of the peritoneum surrounding them. Majority of their portion is kept outside the peritoneum. Okay, so you can see this is the stomach. The stomach is completely within the peritoneum. Does that make sense to you? So guys, here I want you to remember all the organs that are, are retroperitoneal. Here I want you all to remember this mnemonic, the P-DUSK. P-DUSK organs are the pancreas, P e is for the duodenum, the U is for the ureter, the K is for the kidney, the S is for the suprarenal gland, meaning the gland that lies above the kidney. So do not forget these retroperitoneal structures. These are the retroperitoneal organs, which means they do not have peritoneum and they will most likely be lying in close proximity to the posterior abdominal wall. And then there are partially covered organs. These are the parts of the colon. This is the ascending and descending colon and the rectum. For now, I just want you to memorize what are the retroperitoneal structures and what are the partially covered structures. So let me just give you a brief overview of what your digestive tract looks like. So it begins with the esophagus and the stomach. After the stomach, your small intestine begins, right? And the small intestine consists of the three parts, beginning with the duodenum, the jejunum, and then the ileum. And then comes your coils of jejunum. These are mostly in the upper part of your abdomen. And then come the coils of your ileum. These are mostly lying in the lower part. These are the three parts of your uh, small intestine. So the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum. After that begins your large intestine and the large intestine uh, begins with the first part of the large intestine known as the cecum. Now the cecum is from where the appendix is being suspended. All right, the appendix lies in the cecum. After the cecum comes our next part of the large intestine. This is the ascending colon. And then comes your transverse colon. And then your descending colon then the sigmoid colon after sigmoid colon we have the rectum and then we have the inner canal now i want you to write down what are the intraperitoneal structures all of the structures that are not included in these two will be the intraperitoneal structures namely the stomach the spleen the jejunum the ileum the cecum and the appendix here, guys, is what the peritoneum looks like. It's like a sheet covering your abdominal cavity. Let me just give you a little perspective. This is the posterior abdominal wall where this entire peritoneum is resting. The visceras in the peritoneum are basically invaginations in the peritoneum. So whenever the viscera are formed, they're basically invaginating this peritoneum. And the anterior abdominal wall is right above. Suppose an organ starts to develop. Basically an invagination in the peritoneum. When it starts to develop, the peritoneum wants to suspend the stomach within. It has to occupy the abdomen, right? It has to come in front and occupy your abdominal uh, cavity. So for that, this organ will take a fold of the peritoneum along with it. Now, as you can see, this is the fold of peritoneum. As you can see right here, this is the mesentery of whatever organ this is. So if it's appendix, then this is known as the mesoappendix. If this is the colon, then this is the mesocolon. Various organs are suspended within the abdominal cavity like that. Some organs acquire this mesentery, this fold of peritoneum, whereas some organs are just kept, as you can see this organ, is just kept in, in close proximity with the posterior abdominal wall and it has no fold of peritoneum suspending it. Therefore, this organ is known as a retroperitoneal organ. I hope that makes sense. So before we go ahead and talk about the depth of the concept, I would like to talk about some defining terms and 
how there are variations in the peritoneal folds, right? So basic first is a basic that any peritoneal fold that suspends the organ is known as the mesentery. We've already touched that with a meso prefix and their organ name. Also, you can even call them that. All right. So that is one variation of that peritoneal fold. Now, a peritoneal fold, which is large and is attached to the stomach, is known as the omentum. There are two types of omentum, the greater and the lesser omentum. And then is a variety of peritoneal fold that runs between organs or between an organ and the abdominal wall. That fold of peritoneum is known as ligament. All right. These defining terms are super important to understand the concept that we're about to touch. All right. So once again, mesentery is any fold of peritoneum suspending the organ. Omentum is a large peritoneum fold that is attached to the stomach. So what are the two conditions? Has to be a large fold which is attached to the stomach. When the peritoneal fold is connecting two organs or connecting the organ to an abdominal wall, it is known as the ligament. Now let's talk about the embryo.